minutes to places thank you five thank you five so carol yeah you remember your first artistic experience um i do you do yeah i remember um i was super super shy when i was little <laughs> and um <laughs> speaking of shy yeah, <laughs> I think you probably were too. Uh, and I did not want to be in like any sort of place where people had to pay attention to me. And to the point where I remember being in third grade and I was in this chorus concert for a Christmas show and they like were looking for kids volunteers to say like lines in between the song and like she picked me and I desperately didn't want to do it and I got myself out of it because I did not want anyone looking at me. Aww. And um then in fifth grade i was in this program at school that did a lot of stuff with like reading and writing that i had never done before and i really liked it and then one day in class we had to we had to like do a performance and it was really loose like my friend amy and i ended up lip syncing a song and what song? uh what song it was uh is it alone by heart so, how do I get yeah 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 and we like she was pretending to play the piano and I was pretending to sing and it was like we were being super melodramatic about it and we got all these laughs and I was like what is this <laughs> and I I remember my mom remembers this too because she talks about it like I went home and I was like I want to be in a play because I just wanted like suddenly this wasn't terrifying anymore and I don't know what it was that got in me I think I just felt comfortable in this class because it was smaller and like I knew all the people yeah and um when I got laughs, it was like, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, th thus began like my whole, my search for validation through getting laughs. And through laughter. I love that you were like trying to do something serious and, and <laughs> earnest and heartfelt <laughs> and uh, they laughed and you didn't. No, well, we were trying to be stupid. We were trying oh, to, okay. like okay. it was very, but I didn't really know what we were going for. It was just sort of like the more that they laughed at that, the more we like hammed it up. And, yeah, you leaned and, into uh, that. <laughs> yeah, then I was like, oh, I'm funny. Like, I can do this and people will laugh and it's not really me. So it doesn't feel that because we were lip syncing. So it's like, I had to really do anything or perform. Yeah, yeah. I uh, was in a lip sync band when I was in fifth grade and we did the Pointer Sisters Jump. Oh my God. I was on the keyboard. <laughs> we all had to wear these like <laughs> ne neon outfits and jump. Oh, jumping and like playing the like fake keyboard the air keyboard is so ridiculous <laughs> oh, no. so so that i mean did you continue to do comedy did you continue to do performance after that well there was i was in a really i was in west virginia in a pretty small town and the school system was pretty poor we didn't have drama or like anything in the schools um, so I did community theater, like the, that summer, my mom took me to audition for Oliver and I, I was one of the orphans. And like, then I would, I did that constantly, like all the way through graduating from high school. So like mostly musicals. And then there was, um, we started a, like a speech and debate team and, uh, okay. junior high and high school. And like, that was sort of my outlet was doing all that stuff. And then when you went to think about like, you know, college, I don't know if you went to college, but, but was that, was that like on the table as a possibility? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do a bunch of different stuff just like everybody does throughout like junior high and high school. Like I was like, I'm going to be a lawyer. And then we did a mock trial in eighth grade and everyone like ganged up against my case. And I was like, screw this. <laughs> like, <there's nothing> <laughs> I hate you people. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so that went out the door and I was like interested in government for a while. And like, I did a lot of visual art stuff in high school and I thought that's where I was going to go for a while. And I was like really into horses for a while. Um, but yeah, and I can't remember what point it actually happened, but by the time like it, it came time to go to college and think about colleges, I was definitely like auditioning for theater programs. And that's where, where I ended up. And ever since then you've been, had theater in your life. Yeah. Yeah, it's always been there. Um, it's nice now because of the beginning of like, you know, how it feels when you're first graduating from 
something like a performance program and you feel this pressure to like, like, what am I going to do? And you don't really know anyone or anything. And how are you supposed to make any sort of strides in a professional way? And then it kind of just happens, you know, like, and you're in your own time and like at your own speed. Yeah. And, and how do you keep it in your life? Like, how do you keep theater in your life? What keeps you um, connected to it? Well, like that kind of goes into sort of what I was touching on like a minute ago is like, I always knew I didn't want to be like a person who went on the road. Like I wanted a house and I wanted to live in a place. And I knew that kind of didn't go hand in hand with maybe a career in the theater, mm. which stressed me out. Cause that was like, maybe that means I'm really not an artist or I'm not a serious theater artist. Mm. But like as time went on and I ended up back in Pittsburgh, like I found a way to have a life that I enjoy day to day and also have this artistic side and mm. um, not just doing plays. And I thought like, oh, I'm only ever going to be happy acting. Like I'll never be happy doing anything else. And then yeah. I fell into writing and also teaching, which is like both of those things I think bring me probably even more joy than performing. But performing is like that special crack. That <laughs> It's that special drug that there's nothing can really take the place of that. You are your first love, right? I get that. Yeah. So how did you get into writing? How did that? Uh, well, I was working a bunch of really boring temp jobs and office jobs when I lived in New York and also when I first got back to Pittsburgh. And it sure is easy to look like you're working when you're really just writing plays. So, uh, I did that and started writing like little 10 minute plays and, uh, you know, it was sort of the age of like when blogs were really starting up on the internet and, and I was doing a lot of that just to keep my writing like muscles strong. And yeah, that became like to see your own words performed is pretty intoxicating as well. And yeah, after a while it was like, wow, I've got so much control when I write. Like when you're acting like you get into a show and you're playing whatever part and you're kind of stuck there but writing, like you can create any kind of world yeah so is there a, a a show you want to write or a character you want to play a project that you're longing to do well uh yeah and you know at the beginning of this year i always am like man if i just had more time like i need to buckle down and finish this project or that project and then like everything happened and i had lots of time and guess what i still didn't do it. i know right careful you got, then you got to be in the mood you know anyway but yeah i've been like sort of low-key writing a musical for a couple of years now and it's really like my heart is super in it uh in this story and in this project and i've been working with a couple people who like gently nudge me from time to time and i'm like yeah i know i haven't made any progress um but it's coming along and like there are some big elements I'm not really sure about yet and I feel like that those will reveal themselves to me but I would love to see this actually performed like every time I write it I get very emotional like mm. about the characters in the scene so mm. uh, maybe one day so time is that I mean like what are the barriers that's that's standing in the way of you doing those, yeah. those big things I mean like now you have all that time and you're not doing it, so what barriers <laughs> are you facing Stop! <laughs> good question <laughs> good question because there's always an excuse you know and like I was working a lot uh for a while then I bought a house and I'm renovating so like that takes up a lot of time and um mm. and now working on a different kind of um work situation and like having a daughter you know and that's time too and before you know it it's the end of the day and it's like i don't want to think about this even though if i do force myself to open the document and look at it, i'm like man i love this like why am i not working on this all the time yeah it's really just a matter of like i feel like i'm bad about working it into my day like forcing myself to sit down and write yeah. um, so yeah. i'm the biggest barrier well, you know, if you're the biggest barrier, then you can be the solution, right? Like, yeah. you need deadlines? Is that what you need? I do. And like, and the person that I've been collaborating with, he gives me deadlines. And I'm like, this isn't a real deadline. <laughs> because it's not like, I don't know, I really do function well up against a deadline. But if it's like a self imposed deadline, somewhere in my brain, I know that and I'm like, don't feel like I'm going to take it seriously. 
Yeah. So that's up to me to change. You you need like an opening night. Yeah, I need like an opening night or like, you know, we can't pay you until this or <laughs> we're withholding, <laughs> we're withholding your money. <laughs> Come over here and like take one of my cat's hostages or something like that. <laughs> then I'll write this play. And I'll be like, how much do I really love that cat? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> you can cat sit for a bit. <laughs> yeah. So is there anybody that you, whose work, I mean, you were talking a little bit about some collaborators you had. Is there anybody's work who you're like longing to see again or really inspired by and want to want to check out? Oh, man. Like, right... Well, right before everything shut down, I was supposed to take Sadie, my daughter, to see uh, West Side Story on Broadway, which is like one of the most favorite musicals ever. And like, even just watching the, the little preview they had online while they were like marketing the show to me, just made me cry. Cause I love that. I love that whole musical. Uh, I wish, I, I guess it's still happening. Like, I wish I could get back to see it uh, when everything settles down. But also I got really into reading and writing poetry which is something I was never really into before. And there's a poet named Ada Limon and everything I read of hers just like gets right to mm. me and makes me want to write. And I send it to everyone I know and I'm like, read this. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. And I don't know how she does it. She's just, she's really, really amazing. Send it to me. I will. It. Places. <gasps> oh. All right. It's showtime. All right. I'll see you on the boards. Okay. <laughs> Have a good show. You too. Thank you, Cloud.